Hey y'all, what is up? Simply Canadian here, and welcome to today's video. So, just wanted to say this video is kind of different from most of the videos I do. It's a tutorial on how to make GFX's 2019 edition. So yeah, so the things you are going to be needing for today's video is Roblox Studio to export your avatar and Blender to put your avatar into put your avatar into from studio to blender that's what i'm trying to say before i ramble on anymore i just want to say founder of the day ye. so the founder of the day today goes to a hungry person i relate to that username and they drew me this cute photo of me doing the peace sign and i'm just like just chilling you know and i just want to say thank you so much for the drawing i really really like the cool glasses i'm getting a really like retro feel from that and it's really cool so yes thank you a hungry person for the art and if you want to get some art into this video or a different video in the future be sure to join my discord link is here you can send it in the fan art channel anyways let's get back to the video okay so when you search up blender i'm gonna show you what i mean so it's called blender.org home of the blender project i'll put a link in the description below and when you scroll down it should be like download blender you should click that button and it'll take you to this website which will already be in the description below so just check it below instead of going through all that work and you're going to want to download blender 2.79b okay download that one because that is the tutorial i'm doing for this video so this one it has to be this one okay so now that we've got that done and over with we're going to open up roblox studio so here it is link to that download will be in the description below so you you can use any place you want but i'm going to go ahead and create a new base plate just to show you guys what's popping what's up how to do this all so the reason why i'm not using my main account is because i have to show you guys how to get the plugins that i use oh there's my mom okay so as you guys can see i already have a plugin i need to load in my character if you don't have it go to manage plugins find plugins and then it should be right here so all you gotta do click install it's installing it's in your game and then you should be gucci but um but a bam okay so now we're gonna go load in a character all you really have to do is type in your username so my username on my account is simply canadian so you search it up and you can spawn it now, we are not going to use that avatar because I obviously forgot to change it out of that outfit. So, we are going to use my friend, Zuia Cindy. Now, this is to spawn it at the origin, which means it'll be at the center of the map, which is extremely important when you're talking about Blender. Let me open up Blender and I'll explain to you why. If you do not follow these steps as I do them, and your avatar is not in Blender, you will be very confused. Okay, so this is the center. This is the origin. When we load in this character at the origin, spawning it, it will be in the center of the map, which will be the center of Blender. If we were not to spawn in the origin, for an example, and we were maybe over here, and we spawn it, it'll be over here. Meaning, we will have to scroll around to find our avatar. So please, please, please do not comment down below. I don't know where my avatar is because I explained to you very specifically. Spawn it at the origin, okay? So I will be doing two parts of this video. I will be showing you how to do um, blend, like, well, renders with objects from the toolbox models and just simple renders. So for now, I'm going to be using my friend Zuya Cindy. Ah, okay, so all you gotta do is find her, click your avatar, you're gonna go up here under workspace, you're gonna right click her, export selection, okay? Now, I usually save my things into models to keep it all organized, so I'll just call this one Cindy. So I'll save it. Okay, so you've just successfully exported your model, or wherever you've exported it to. Now, important things, important part, we open up Blender. So, this is a math tutorial, but I'm pretty sure Windows can copy this as well. So, we have this block here, we don't want it, so we just hit X and then D to delete it, alright? And then next, we're going to import our avatar. So, we just go up to File, click it, scroll down to Import, and then go to Wavefront bracket OBJ. Click that, 
So I saved my so I saved my render to a folder in my desktop known as models. So I'm going to go to my desktop, I'm gonna to go to models, and I'm gonna look for Cindy. So I click it, go up to the top right corner and hit import object. So now we've imported but it's not textured. Simple, easy to fix. You hit N on your keyboard, scroll down until you see textured solid, and you click that. Bam, now it's a textured solid. So what I usually enjoy doing right off the bat is, first things first, I will right click all of the things I want to join together as a group. So in order to um, join multiple things, you just click with right click while holding down shift. So shift and right click. And then that's how you collect all of them. You click all of them and they're all selected. And then you'll go to your left and hit join. Okay, so now it is one object. Bam, easy peasy. So I'm gonna undo that. And then I'm gonna just select the headphones, join it, boop. And look, all of her hats are one. I'll undo that again so her head is in place. So um, if you guys are also wondering how do you move, I have a mouse. So the scrolly thing, you can hear that right there, that is how I zoom in and out. And if I want to rotate, I will hold down on the scrolly thing and move around like that. If you don't have a mouse, don't know, can't really help you, I haven't really done this without a mouse, so <laughs> I'm not being that helpful. Okay, so we're gonna use delete again, X and delete, because that pigeon is not necessary. So. Now we have an avatar, so you're probably wondering, okay, I want to make a cool position pose for this avatar. So what I'm going to do for you right now is show you. So we're going to position our avatar and then we're going to sh I'm going to show you my settings for rendering it. So I will make the body invisible. If I click this eye right here, the torso is invisible, okay? This button is to deselect or select it, so if it's gray, I cannot select the body part. Easy. And this camera right here is when I render it, that torso will not be seen in the render. So be careful not to click this if you want it to be seen, you know, don't, don't mess with this if you want that part to be seen. But right off the bat, lamp, not necessary, we're deleting that. At least I, I delete it because I don't need it. So, we're going to make the torso invisible and we're going to hold down on our scrolly thing for a mouse and look underneath her. So, we've selected her head by right clicking and now we're going to hit tab, which puts us into edit mode, okay? So, we're going to click the bottom or the as center as we can get on the head, then we'll hit tab again and then we'll hit shift, control, alt, c. We're on, there we go. So, there's going to be a bunch of different um, selections we can use to set the origin of the head which means instead of the head rotating from down here it'll rotate from up here so I'm gonna open that up again and we're gonna set origin to 3d cursor bam so now we can rotate it from that one point we're gonna go ahead and do that with the arms too so we're gonna tap right click tab click okay left click then we're gonna hit tab again, shift, control, alt, c. And then we're gonna hit the middle. It's important not to do the control, shift, alt, and c when you're in edit mode because look, it won't let you. It'll say, operation cannot be performed in edit mode. So you have to get out of edit mode and do control, shift, alt, and c. Okay, so now we've done that to both of the arms, they will all rotate at that one area, I will show you how to rotate later, and then we're going to again select the legs, I've already explained myself multiple times, so I feel like you guys don't need to know. Okay, so now her body should be Gucci. The pose I'm going to be doing for today is going to be maybe a simple wave with her hand on her shoulder or her hip that would be weird if her hand was on her shoulder so we're going to hit r okay and this will let you rotate it in any direction you want but if you want a specific direction you can either hit z x or y so r x is rotating it upon this red line right here so you can rotate up or backwards our Y will rotate upon this green line, so you can side to side, that's how you rotate it, okay? And then our Z rotates across this blue line, which means it could, it could be like 
you know, yeah, it's, it's simple. So if we want to give her a waving pose, we'll hit R, X, and put her arm up. So her arm is waving, easy peasy. Now, what I'm about to do here, I don't really suggest doing it on any other, any avatars except for like the square blocky dudes. Like it just looks better and I'll explain why when I do the next part of the tutorial with like objects like swords. But if you hit tab, it should get all these lines on it, right? We'll go to your left, hit subdivide, and that divides it into many little pieces. The reason why I don't like these models is because when you subdivide it, there's so many little pieces here, and you might be wondering, well, why is that important? I'll let you know right now. So we're gonna do that because this is enough for us. Okay, you're gonna be wondering, what the heck am I doing? Easy, I'll show you. You hit Z, okay? That makes everything see-through. But since we've already selected this arm by hitting right-click and tab, it'll, what we do next will only affect this arm. So, we're gonna go to the bottom, click it, left-click, and then we're gonna right-click. We're gonna move down, and we're gonna hold down control on our keyboard, and we're gonna drag. This makes a little box thingy, which will let you which will let you, you know, grab onto whatever you want to grab onto. So we're going to make sure we grab onto the bottom part of this arm. Okay, easy. We have this arm selected. So, this is a hard part. If you really don't want to learn this, I understand. But at the bottom, we have a bunch of buttons. So we have the transformation manipulators. And then this one is the selecty thingy where we can drag it back and forth. I'm going to undo that. And then we're going to have this to help rotate it. So as you can see, we have this circular thingy. <laughs> I don't really use Blender much, so I don't really understand what this is, but I know it helps me. So we're going to rotate her arm inwards because she's going to be like putting her hand on her hip. Again, I really don't recommend doing this for this type of avatar because it looks weird, but I'll show you. See, look, it's breaking her arm, but we're rotating it. So we've rotated it with the green one to do that, okay? So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna hit this arrow guy and drag him in. So now her arm is semi-natural, kind of. Okay, now in order to make it not C3, we're gonna hit Z again, okay? And then we're gonna hit tab to unselect her arm. And now it looks like she's broken her arm. Now, if you have clothing on your arm, it's gonna look weird. It's going to be kind of odd. Um, it doesn't look weird right now, but I'll show you what you need to do if your clothing looks weird. So over here on the right, we're gonna drag this open a bit, okay? And there's triangle thing. Okay, triangle thing beside this wrench thing and this circle thing. I know my words for Blender. We're, there's button right here is going to say auto smooth. You're gonna click that. See, there was a change in texture of the arm. I'm gonna click that so that it has not been selected and there is no check mark. There. So now we're gonna position her arm with our R buttons. You should know how to do this, kinda. And it's kinda like she's holding her hip up. Yeah, so she's waving with her hand on her hip. Perfect. So, when you're standing for a photo, your legs aren't really in like this, I guess. You want to make it a bit natural for a pixelated character. So you're going to hit R and Y, maybe like move the leg out a bit. Maybe you can move this leg back to make it look like she's taking a step forward or a step back, like that. Okay, so um, there. There we go. And now I guess we'll work on the head. So as I said before, it's pretty easy. Just use the RZ, RX, or RY buttons. So we're gonna do RZ to rotate her head this way because we want her to face the camera. This is where our camera will be. And then maybe this is it. Let's just say this is it. This is all we wanted. This is what we want to render. Now I will show you the settings I use to render. So resolution. When I make renders, it's usually for thumbnails. So a thumbnail size is 1,280. X and then the Y is 720. So that's what I'm going to set the resolution as. So that's how big the camera frame is. Look, 
I'll hit zero. Zero is how you select the camera. If you want it to be a square, you can make the X 720 and then the camera is officially a square. But we're gonna make it a rectangle because why not? Okay, so to get out, you just hold the scrolly thing of your mouse and you just move out of it. Now, resolution, we want it to be good. We're gonna make it 100%, okay? Now we're gonna move on to shading. So normally when you render this, look, when you render this, I'm gonna hit render, I hit zero, and then I hit render. It's all dark and it's not transparent in the background. You want it to be transparent. So we're gonna scroll down to shading, hit that, alpha, and then sky. There's a box, click the box and hit transparent. That'll make the background, you guessed it, transparent. So now that we've got that covered, we are almost there. We are almost on our way. So that's all we have to do for this page, okay? Next, we're going to this earth thing. Click that, it's the world. So this controls the lighting. We deleted the light. Well, at least I did, because I don't like it. It makes the lighting a bit too sharp for my, uh, for my type of thing. So here we have different buttons. I usually just hit environment lighting and ambient, ambient, ambient occlusion. That's it. I just click those squares and then now when I render it, you can see what's going on. But if that is too bright for you, you literally just, what am I doing? You can like click off ambient and maybe render it and then it'll be a darker version, less bright. I also forgot to explain how to exit out of camera mode once you've rendered it, so you just ESC, ESC. I'll put that at the other area so they know. Okay, so now that we have our lighting, we're gonna go to our camera. So hit zero, shift, F, and now we can move our camera. Okay, so remember shift F to move the camera. And now we're gonna use our W, A, S, D. W, A, S, D buttons to move. So W to go forward, A to go left, S to go backwards, D to go right. And then we can also use our Q and E buttons. So Q goes down, E goes up. Simple. So if you want to move faster too, you can also hold down Shift and W. So if I want to go faster forwards, I hit W and Shift. So it makes it go a bit faster. If I want to move sideways, backwards faster, S and Shift. So now that we've got that covered, we are going to go ahead and render this. We're going to move her um, like that, maybe for the thumbnail. So she's going to be in the corner. And then maybe if I want to move it a bit so she's looking at us, we're going to go this way. Now that we have our, there we go. So now that we have our camera position, just left click and your camera will stay there. And then now we can finally render it. So here I am, I've rendered it. Again, I think I hit the wrong button, so. Again, environmental lighting is for a darker render. If you want more light or bright render, hit ambient occlusion and environment lighting. So we're gonna go ahead and render that. So now it's super duper bright. Okay, so we're almost finished guys. So we're gonna go to image, save as image, desktop, at least for me it's desktop, and I'm going to save it as Cindy Render. Bam. Saving it as a PNG because I like PNGs. And if it's a PNG, the background will be transparent. Easy peasy. So now. Go ahead.